went on to uh, Dan Patrick show. Um, so and Dan Patrick asked him a question that was regarding an article that was in the GQ magazine where Scotty Pippen discussed the situation of the 1994 playoff series versus the Knicks where uh, Tony Kukoc got the last shot, and we know that Scottie Pippen refused um, to, you know, to uh, enter the game um, in that situation. And uh, pretty much he pretty much said that Phil Jackson was a racist. So <laughs> I, I want to get your thoughts on that uh, for you, Gabe. What's your thoughts on uh, Scottie Pippen? Well, I tell you, in today's society – People, people will say anything just to sell books. I mean, it's just that simple. Yep. Now, now with that being said, I mean, Scotty Pippen is coming across as someone who's just bitter. Yep. I mean, that that's that's the way I look at it. He's just he's bitter. I mean, look, the the year that Michael Jordan retired. I mean, now I'll I'll, I'll make this. I I kind of understand it to a point. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, he was a leading scorer. I mean, for the Bulls that year. I mean, he was averaging, you know, 22 points. You know, he was averaging like eight rebounds, five assists, two steals. I mean, he was the leading scorer. And I guess his, his in his mind, he figured, well, I, the, the last three, I was, a, I was, I was a, co- a contributor to the last three championships that the Bulls won. Yep. Okay, fair enough. But here's the thing. Tony Kukoc – had three game-winning um, shots, I mean, that same year. I mean, this was Kukoc's, uh, Tony Kukoc's rookie year, and he had three game-winning um, baskets. So Phil Jackson decided, well, this guy's won three games for me. Why don't I drop a play to see if he can win a fourth game for me? And basically, Phil the Zen Master Jackson was validated because Tony Kukoc hit the shot that won the game because he doesn't hit that shot. Hey, they're down three games to zero in, in, in the semifinals and on the ways of possibly getting swept. Yep. So Pip, 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 Pippen's sitting out that, I mean, sitting out that last minute just because he didn't get a chance get the, Phil Jackson didn't drop the play for him. I mean, he's just, I mean, that's not being a team player. I mean, he was just basically pouting. Now to say that Phil Jackson is a racist, I mean that's just that's just ridiculous. I mean, like I say, obviously he's he's trying to sell this book. I mean, because think about it. I mean, if the late Kobe Bryant was around, you think he would say? I mean, after Phil Jackson, you know, that last season wrote a book criticizing him heavily, but yet he embraced Phil Jackson returning to the Lakers, and he won two more championships, much to my liking as a Laker fan. <laughs> so, I yeah. think I, I mean, like I say, so Scotty, I, I understand what he's saying, but to call a man a, a racist, that's just that's just ridiculous. Like I say, he's just trying to sell a book. Yeah, yeah, and that's one thing too. Where I got, I have to give him a pass because just everything, like you said, promoting a book, promoting the bourbon. So you know, you look at that. Well, maybe he just want to, you know, say something kind of outlandish to kind of, you know, I. It's a it's a funnel. It's a funnel to kind of essentially, hey, I'm I got a you know I got a bourbon and I got a memoir, but I'm gonna have this little catchy you know I'm gonna have this type of this buzz going around uh, what I'm promoting and then also um, you know with the, the death of his son uh, just you know, two months ago, so you know as far as just being in in, in his you know as far so I, I'm gonna give him a pass on that, but on the surface, the thing the thing about calling someone a racist in a sense, it's almost like it has to be proof. Like the evidence that he, that he showed about the situation with Tony Kukoc doesn't make it, doesn't make that particular circumstance now. And I might bring up some points momentarily about what he could have possibly used to, you know, to, to kind of um, argue his point or bring his point home. But the situation of what he, what he conveyed to us, the situation with the Tony Kukoc shot, you got to think about it. Two up the two previous possessions in that game, he missed those. So mm-hmm. as a coach, he had to as as Phil Jackson as a coach had to make an adjustment to say, "Hey, do I give Scotty the ball the third time? Will he screw it up again, or do I give it to like you said, Tony Kukoc, who is who has came up to us in a clutch 
in various times during the season. Like, do I, you know, and that's, and that's a, that's what I would call a coach's decision. And that's based on judgment, not by the color of your skin or by a certain feeling. Now, Phil, to his credit, he has said certain things that have rubbed me the wrong way. Um, right. yeah. I, two two examples, which I didn't even know this until today, about Robert Ory. So Robert Ory had a situation, you know, bringing bring the Laker point home, bringing it bringing it to the Lakers, um, where he pretty much was in a huddle and he was talking to Robert Ory and said, "You need to know the sign of your master's voice." And Robert Ory was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't hear about that one. I'm from, I'm, from, I'm from the South. Like, we don't play that type of stuff. I live in the South, so hey. <laughs> right, right. That's what, that's what you know, Robert Ory, because he's from, you know, he from Alabama. Mm-hmm. And, like, he, and that's, you know, that's what he was saying. And even even in that, he's, he, they talked about it, but he said Phil didn't mean it in that particular way. They squashed it. But he even said to, to that point where, you know, Feel in his in his personal opinion is a racist, and even for the, even to kind of go back to Scotty's point, where I can't necessarily say if he feels that way. It might be other examples that he may feel that way, but he didn't convey those type of situations. Like if you had a Robert Orr situation, now that would have kind of would have raised some eyebrows to me more so than not passing the ball to him after he didn't miss two shots. And even Robert Orr, to his credit, said, "Hey, well." He, I don't think he's racist, but he has said something. He's his certain tones that he has, has said to us in a huddle, and you know they was able to kind of ch- he checked them at the door with that. And then the other one was the whole LeBron James posse thing. Yeah, that, that I, was, I do remember. I didn't, yeah. I didn't like that. I just think yeah, well, you didn't know, either. I didn't care for that either. But here's another thing. I mean. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I mean, those if, if if one of these other guys was writing that book and could use that as an example, that would probably be the example. But see, yep. what what Scottie Pippen is, I mean, th- th- this this particular incident wasn't racial. This was just yeah. this was situational that's basketball. Cool. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, the situation called for a guy who's been clutched for me three times during the regular season. Exactly. That that's all. That's all that was. That I mean. I mean, it's, it's it's situational basketball. It's just that you go to a guy that's gonna that you have you know as a better chance of hitting a shot of a guy who has not proven to be clutch, even though he was a leading scorer during the regular season. They he still wasn't clutch when it came through. Right. I mean, so I just look. I just look at. I mean, and of course, Scotty's still also upset about. You know, the, you know how he was portrayed in the Last Dance. So that I mean, so it's just it's it's a, it's a guy that's it's, he's bitter. I mean, he's he's angry. Yeah. And, you know, he figure you know, like I say, anytime you I mean call somebody a racist, I mean that's gonna that's gonna generate a lot of buzz. Yeah, big time. And that's the thing when you look at it, and then um, and that's my thing. And I understand like with it, it could be interpreted that way. But you just, you have to give us a you gotta give us an example like you gotta yeah. be like with that and like you said and it and it still back to the whole last dance thing where you like you said because even even when he was saying in the argument about the you know I was here since 1987 I did this I felt disrespected I've been through all these years and it's my first year with without MJ this is my time to shine and you know in that type of moment that's the biggest game of that season at that point but I mean. Yeah, and to even to the point where I don't understand why essentially I I mean I get I, I mean I don't get it, but I I mean as far as just that whole situation where it's just like what you what you just described isn't racist. It's it's a basket it's it's a basketball decision. It has nothing to do with color. And um like you said, that's the whole field, the whole posse thing, that's where I think the whole thing like he has said things. It's even I think there was a situation I think like in the late nineties. I think he might have been with y'all. I think potentially where he was saying how it's hard to uh, get the modern athlete to kind of focus because of just their attention span and what have you, and to saying how certain music influences that type of mentality. Mm-hmm. And he's talked about and he's talked about the the, the uh, dress code. Back in the early 2000s, and saying how you know these guys sometimes look like you know 
um, they had like prison outfits. I forgot to the extent of it, but some of that nature. And then going back to the posse thing, where like you said, I didn't like that either because the simple fact of normal in in normal circumstances, you wouldn't call a guy who his owner and then a, an an executive producer for things as as your posse. Like they're not just like when I think of posse, I think of people around it that don't do nothing. They ain't doing nothing. They just like like just just people that's just hanging around. But these are like powerful people now. You look at even in theory, even even back then, Rich Paul, you know, was doing his thing, and then also, um, um, and then also who was who also was in that thing. Randy Mims, I think he was in that, and um, all and just all the all the LeBron James guys. He could, could, could consider them as a posse, which I just thought that was kind of out of bounds for just the simple fact of. These guys aren't just like eating off of LeBron James per se. They're right. not just they're they are part of his team. They're an integral part of their team and they're integral parts in their own fields. So they're not just guys who are like I would be like what you would call it, like a leech. They're not leeches. Exactly. I mean, these are guys that you know they 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 they're, they're in LeBron's circle. You know, with his business dealings and yep. things like that. I mean, these are not just guys who are just hanging around yeah, LeBron because. Yeah. He has a lot of he has a lot of money. I mean, one thing you can say about you can say what you will about LeBron, but LeBron is an excellent businessman. Yeah. I mean, he has a lot of good people around him. So, see, one of the reasons why you know, like like a lot of um, athletes, whether whether it's football or basketball, that they go broke is because they have the wrong people around them who misuse their money and things like that. And then next thing you know, they're left with pennies. I mean, let's let, let's get back to Scotty. Scotty, mm-hmm. Scotty's actually broke. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Scotty's broke. Yeah, I mean, big time. He squandered. He squandered a lot of his wealth. So, I yeah. mean, so him trying to sell this book, I mean, is also a way for him to, you know, try to get get, get some millions back that you know that he lost. Yeah, big time. And that's the and, and that's the biggest issue, I think. Like you said, it just goes stems back to, and I understand like what he's doing, the media machine behind it, because obviously, if he didn't say that, we probably wouldn't be talking about Scotty Pippen. In, oh in no, wait, wait, as I far mean, as that, his, his book would be just like okay. I mean, he, he said he wrote a book. Okay, yeah, right. He wrote a book. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. whether I read it or not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's all. And we, yeah, and we understand he's he's doing his promotion thing, and also just you know, and hope you know, hope he's in a in a good mind space. I, every you know, everything that's happened to him this year, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, 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 you so, really yeah. for him. You do feel for him. Though. I yeah, mean, yeah. He, yeah. He, he, lost, he lost his he lost his son. I mean, you really yeah. do feel for him. But you yeah, know, at the same yeah. time, you know, if you're gonna make a charge like that, you know, you gotta present some. Yeah. As, as some yeah. proofs that you know that can't be picked apart, right? Like like we have <laughs> essentially. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, like so definitely yeah, so definitely huge shout out to Scotty, man. We still love you despite um, yeah. our disagreements, but we still love you, Scotty. So. Well, I, <laughs> I like Scotty too much because see, what, what, like I say, beat my Lakers yeah. when he won, and I got to get Scotty. He, I mean, he neutralized Magic Johnson, so I'm still I'm still I'm still a little salty about that. So. Man, man, that was thirty years ago, man. Get over there. <laughs> I let it go. I'm still. I'm just. Good, <laughs> that 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 was the um. You know them beating my Lakers for that championship. You had all these bull bandwagon fans come out come out of oh, Woodward. Yeah. Everybody was a Bulls fan until they all fell apart. So we still here. Season. We still here. We still here. Yeah. Don- Billy Donovan gonna ride the ship. We got an Olympian in the fold and, and Zach Levine. We are gonna be all right. <laughs> we got no, we got our, we got our first round pick already in Vucevic. We're gonna be good. Well, we'll see. The Bulls, <laughs> the Bulls haven't done anything in, 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 in since Derrick Rose, so hey. Hey, we'll be back though. Hey, it's only a matter of time. We getting it together. We got we got faith in uh, Billy Donovan. He gonna do his thing. We definitely um we gonna we gonna be back. Trust me, we'll be back. We'll be back in the Eastern Conference, for Trust me, you know. Maybe another five years, probably. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I think probably in the next few years, probably in the next, potentially maybe this year, potentially. I think that um, if everything, can, if they can get chemistry together, I think that was the biggest thing of acquiring Vucevic so like kind of late in the trade deadline, even though it kind of hurt them, you know, after the trade. But then I think, I think once they kind of get themselves together, it's a continuity. 
um, guys get um, better, like Patrick Williams. I think he's going to do his thing. I think he's going to be a, a stud in this league. I think he could be the next. Uh, he could be the next potential next Kawhi Leonard in this league potentially. The next mm-hmm. uh, kind of a you know a versatile kind of guy, almost like an almost not saying like a Jimmy Butler like, but more so like a, how Jimmy was a project coming in, and then he morphed into pretty much um, a, a top twenty five player in this league potentially. That's how I look at it from that, not from a from a basketball standpoint, but more not well not from a game standpoint, but more so of just how I think he's going to be like a um, a guy that. Is a project coming in and could become and become a star in this league. Not a star, but more so a guy, an all-star caliber kind of player potentially. And Patrick sure. Williams. So we'll see. Well, we'll see. Like I say, the yeah. East because the East has actually gotten actually a little bit better than it, than yeah. it in recent years. So I yeah. mean, this would be a good time for them to try to come up. I mean, because yeah. the only thing they got now is like I say, all they have is Philadelphia. I mean, if Ben Simmons can ever get a jump shot, but that's another yeah. story. You know, Milwaukee's probably be there, whether they, you know, you know how, how they appear in this playoffs or not. I mean, they're still going to be there. And, yeah, I mean, so the Bulls might, might I mean, if they, if they get the right coach and the right players around them, because they, they, yeah. they've, they've had so much bad coaching over the past few years. And yeah. that, that's, that's part of the reason why they've been out of the, they've been out of the spotlight. Yeah, but they, they should be okay. The only thing I really worry about is that, I mean, our division is kind of stacked. When you got Milwaukee. In that division, you got I think Indiana's gonna be back now with uh Rick Carlisle out there. I think he's gonna get the best out of um, you know, Sabonis, uh Karis Avert, you know, and then even you look at like Detroit or well, Cleveland, and then you look at Detroit. Detroit might be potentially have a backcourt of Killing Hayes and uh K Cunningham. So that's gonna be definitely intriguing in in our in the central division. So Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a very, very uh, interesting uh, year next year for the, for my Bulls.